This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. How do you face those turning points in your life? Jesus gives us a great example here in this passage. And so we're going to take a look at these, these, um, uh, these four things that Jesus that Jesus that we see in this passage, how you handle the turning points in your life. The first one is you need to expect conflict. That's in verses 45, um, well, verses 45 and 46. You need to expect conflict in your life. Now that's on an seems to me like it's on an ongoing basis, but certainly in a turning point, there is going to be conflict. Uh, we saw something similar to this last week when we were looking at the, uh, uh, the study of living again. And that basically what that was is you have to expect negative circumstances. This is a little different from that in that there are going to be supporters in your life along the way. People who really encourage you, who hold you up, who believe in you, that prop you up. You're, there are going to be those people in your life. But there are also going to be those people in your life who for whatever reason whether it be wrong priorities or ignorance or arrogance or jealousy or hatred or greed or any of those things, there are going to be people who, motivated by any of those things, who will come against you. And they will stand against you. You are going to have people like that in your life. doesn't matter where you are in your life. There are going to be people like that in your life. That's just the way it is. And in a turning point, it becomes you become even more sensitive to that. That there are people who, who are in direct conflict with you. David wrote about it uh, and talks about it in uh, the 10th Psalm. Psalm 10, and listen to this. For the wicked boasts of the desires of his soul, and the one greedy for gain curses and renounces the Lord. In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there's no God. His ways prosper at all times. David was saying, this is what it seems like. Your judgments are on high, out of his sight. As for all of his foes, he puffs at them. He says in his heart, I shall not be moved. Throughout all generations, I shall not meet adversity. His mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. Now notice how it affects you. How a person like this affects you. Verse 8, he sits in ambush in the villages. In hiding places, he murders the innocent. His eyes stealthily watch for the helpless. He lurks in ambush like a lion in his thicket. He lurks that he may seize the poor. He seizes the poor when he draws him into his net. The helpless are crushed, sink down, and fall by his might. That's what happens. There are people in our lives that are in direct conflict with us that are seeking to conflict with what's going on in our lives. And sometimes it's intentional, and sometimes it's just because they don't care. Verse 11 says, that guy says in his heart, or that woman says in her heart, God has forgotten, he has hidden his face, and he will never see it. And what David was saying was, oh yes, he does. Just because this person seems to be having the upper hand, or this person is winning, doesn't mean he's winning. You are always going to have conflict in your life. People who don't value you. People who don't understand you. You know, I call, I call people like that irregular people. You know, you have regular people, regular friends, and then there are people who are just flat irregular. You know any irregular people? Yeah, can we make a list? You know, and people who just don't fit. People are just a little, something is just not quite right. They don't, they don't mesh with, with us and they don't seem to mesh with, uh, with our, our concept of, of the way life should be. And they're just irregular people. Well, Jesus had those kind of people in his life. And I want you to notice that the conflict in Jesus' life didn't start when he went into the ministry. Jesus has started into the ministry. And by the way, uh, next week we get into, uh, the last couple of weeks of his ministry, of his life before the crucifixion. And so we're, we're wrapping up his ministry, which has basically been a little over three years now. And so that conflict in Jesus' life didn't ha just happen during his ministry. If you'll recall, it started when he was born. Remember how when he was born, Herod sought to kill him? And in the process, he slaughtered a bunch of young boys? 
You know, th there are people, there are people who conflict with us all of our lives. You have those people in your life now. But conflict doesn't happen because you are right or wrong. Conflict happens because you are breathing. That's when conflict happens. And so it's not a, it's not a question of why does this person hate me? What have I done wrong? Or what, you know, it's, here's, here's the issue. You're breathing. When you stop breathing, you're not going to have a conflict with that person. Conflict is often the result of someone else's problem. Sometimes it's because of you, but sometimes it's because of someone else. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.